السلطاني بي اتش دي ان اسلاميك هيستوري هيستوري باقر العلوم يونيفرستي The title is The Encounter of Imam Al-Qadim, peace be upon him, with the challenges of Greek-Arabic translation movement. Yes, please, welcome to the stage. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajjil farajuhum. Hello everyone, thank you for giving me this chance to share my ideas regarding the role of Imam Al-Qadim alayhi in challenging, uh, in encountering the challenges of Greco-Arabic translation movements. <clears throat> the Greco-Arabic translation initiative represented a significant and well-supported endeavor aimed at rendering a substantial corpus of secular Greek text into Arabic. This movement took place in Baghdad from the mid 8th century through the late 10th century. Numerous Greek works spanning fields such as philosophy, medicine, science were successfully translated into Arabic. This translation exerted a profound influence on the development of Islamic philosophy. Um, we know that uh, in the second century after Hijra, we have uh, many important incidents uh, which had many effects on the political and social aspects of the Islamic society. The first one was the translation, uh, sorry, the transition uh, of the government from Umayyad to Abbasid and uh, Imams, uh, uh, for example, Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam had this freedom of uh, preaching uh, and saying his thought uh, more freely than others. And in some uh, years of Imam al-Qadim alayhi salam we have the same uh, freedom. The second important uh, incident in this time is uh, that Baghdad was constructed in 149, and uh, the presence of uh, different denominations and religious groups in Baghdad uh, was very uh, important in this time, where we have many debates, interreligious debates, uh, between different sects and uh, groups of religious groups in this time. And uh, during these debates, we can uh, see that these uh, Hellenistic ideas can penetrate the thought of the Muslim society. And uh, the third one is the translation movement, which we know uh, some, uh, in some incidents, uh, in some evidences, something about uh, this translation uh, movement and what was translated and uh, what was important for me uh, was to find the evidences that uh, these translations were before uh, the martyrdom of Imam al-Qazim. And because of that, uh, I would expect that Imam al-Qazim as the leader uh, of the Shia society, at least the Shia society, should have some sort of encounter with these ideas. So uh, just to mention some of these evidences, uh, in the time of Umayyads, we have uh, this report that George, the bishop of the Arabs, had translated three parts of Aristotle's organ. Uh, Mansur has ordered to translate some of the work of Ar Aristotle. Uh, Mahdi, Al Mahdi Abbasi also uh, ordered to translate Kitab al Jadal of Aris Aristotle. Uh, Ibn Muqaffa, who died in 143 before Imam al Qazim alayhi salam is reported to have translated uh, three books of Aristotle and one uh, book of Ferforius. Uh, and also one important in, uh, evidence is uh, one of the uh, students of Ibn Muqaffa, who is Faiz ibn Abi Saleh, uh, who is uh, also accused of tendency toward Zandaqa. And uh, so uh, it is very important, this uh, evidence, because we can say that Ibn Mughaffa, who is one of the main translators of Greek ideas and Greek works into Arabic, could have uh, some effects on his students, like Faiz ibn Abi Saleh. Uh, the other uh, evidence is uh, Timothy I, who had a debate with Mahdi al-Abbasi in 165. Uh, it is mentioned that he has translated the book of topic of the uh, Aristotle uh, into 
Arabic, with the intermediary language of Syriac, of course. And the last one is Zerar ibn Amr al-Mu'tazili, uh, who is mentioned who, uh, that has uh, written a critique on Aristotle's idea. So all of this show that uh, in the time of Imam al-Kazim al the penetration of these ideas uh, could be observed. Therefore, uh, not only as, as a Shi'i uh, Muslim, but uh, as a historian, we can expect the uh, encounter of Imam al-Kazim with all of these uh, Greek ideas. So uh, I tried to search all of the hadith of Imam al-Kazim to find uh, some sort of encounter with this uh, penetration of ideas uh, in different uh, issues regarding theology. Uh, the first issue uh, was uh, God and his attributes. Uh, we know that Greek philosophers held mythology in high regard, considering it an internal part uh, of their historical narrative. However, not all philosophers adhered to gods depicted in popular myth. A comprehensive analysis of Greek civilization reveals a fascinating evolution over time, this illusionment led them to rationalize their philosophical perspectives, and eventually they believed in a higher God. So in Socratic philosophy, God does not occupy a significant role. For Plato, the concept of God and theology remained intricate and subject to diverse interpretation. Aristotle begins by contemplating the concept of God and existence. He asserts that there must exist an internal and impre imperishable substance. Thales suggested that Supreme God directly produces the universe from itself. So you know, we can see many diverse ideas regarding God in philosophy. Uh, referring to Imam Qasim alayhi salam narratives, one of the major issues is God and his attributes. Narrated by al kulaini in some hadith, Imam asserts that God is not a materialistic being he also denied any kind of motion for God. Imam had always referred people to the Quran to find the best explanation for the attributes of God. Imam asserts the fact that the world is contingent and created in a definitive time. And God argues with this evidence on the necessity uh, of his eternal existence. The other issue regarding God is eradicating Qulov. In Greek mythology, some figures were born as humans, but later became gods. So these ideas were common in Greek philosophy. During the period of Imams, also, we see this kind of ideas, al quluv uh, And in the time of Imam al Qasim, for example, we can see uh, al Rawandiyah, who believed in the divine nature of uh, Abu Muslim and also the Caliph. Notably, during the time of Imam al Qasim, representatives of this movement were present and Imam engaged in efforts to encounter their influence, for example, one minute, okay. So uh, one of the famous incidents is uh, Muhammad ibn Bashir, who also was uh, harshly uh, opposed by Imam al-Kazim alayhi salam. In, the, in other uh, issues, determinism also a kind of Greek uh, idea, which was encountered by Imam al-Kazim, you can see in his ahadith, many references to rejecting al-Jabriya and determinism. And also in uh, prophethood, Greek philosophers believe that some philosophers can have some kind of uh, miracle, some kind of uh, relation to God. And uh, uh, in a parallel way, in Imam al-Kazim alayhi salam ahadith, we can uh, find uh, some uh, way to define the true uh, way of defining uh, prophethood. So going to the uh, conclusions, Imam al-Kazim alayhi salam had an, uh, we think he had an active confrontation with the negative consequences of this movement in the uh, realm of theology uh, in terms of uh, the, issue, uh, the issues regarding God, God and his attributes, eradicating Qulov and uh, other issues regarding God. And what uh, was very important in the ahadith of Imam al-Kazim alayhi salam, 
was the last one referring to himself in particular and to Ahlul Bayt salam in general as those wasi and the successor of the Prophet can be a great confrontation with increasing blind translation and imitation of Greek secular sciences because he said that uh, you cannot refer blindly to the other ideas and the true uh, the truth of the Islam and the attributes of God and other theological concepts should be achieved by referring to Imam and uh, the Holy Quran. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Sultani, for uh, such uh, an important topic because here uh, the Muslims are going to encounter many uh, problems at that time in the time of Imam Kazim. Thank you very much for yeah. such a paper.